Praise the Lord that is all stand this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Let me say a blood and good afternoon to each and every one. Hallelujah. We are here today to celebrate the life of the brother, the deceased brother. Hallelujah. And I believe celebration is a thing of joy. But as we often say, we can't come to terms with death. Hallelujah. So this evening we want to start by singing what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to Often forfeit, oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus, though our heavy weakness, take it. Praise the Lord. I say we come to celebrate the life of the young man. Celebration is supposed to be something with joy. Amen. And I know plenty of us know the word of God. I know plenty of us know about God. Hallelujah. To be absent from this body is to be present with Almighty God. So we come to celebrate the life of the young man this evening. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time I call the young lady to do the eulogy. Praise the name of the Lord. support you have lended us in the last couple of days, the last couple of weeks. My name is Maria Marcel. I'm Andre's one and only baby sister. And it's nice to see so many people here lending support to my sister. She's putting on a brave face, but y'all please keep supporting her because after today everybody spreads out and goes back to their homes. I'm on the other side of the country and she's here. Sometimes her phone call doesn't my brother. Oh, my brother. My mom had four kids. My brother is the middle of the brothers. Three boys and one girl. Right now, my oldest brother is sitting there. And he's the last one. This brother here generosity, love. That's what anybody who knew him would say about him. There will be never a bad word to say. If he got upset with you, that lasted for about five minutes and then you were good. His children, his daughter is not here right now, she's on the way. I'm sorry to say, they got caught in traffic. His grandchildren are here. And when I say grandchildren, I am not talking 
because that was his child and these are his grandchildren. Gemma had two lovely children and he grew them as his own. And all her grandchildren are his own. We have some of them sitting right here. We have two here, we have on this side, we have some more. And they will tell you, he never treated them other than like they were blood. Right? And that's who my brother was. Kind and generous stuff for it. As a big brother, I remember when I was small, I would get into trouble. And I don't mean me, myself. Huh? I was always really good at the innocent face. So I'd put them in trouble and say, they did it. But my brothers will never let my mother know that, you know, it's your daughter that do it. They would take the blame and they wouldn't say anything. That's how kind my brother was. He would never let me get into trouble. But later on, he would warn me about what he decided wrong and made sure I did the right thing. As we got older, well, I moved on because of work. But he was always there. Whenever we got together, especially for Christmas, as my mother demanded, you had to come home for Christmas. No matter what you were doing, he would have to leave Jamma and come home for Christmas. You had to come home. It was like there wasn't any time in between us. We were, like it was just yesterday and we're seeing each other today, so it's hi, hello. And we will just launch off into conversation and up to some mischief. So I can tell you that is one thing I will truly miss about him. Being able to just have him to talk to. Have him just being there. I know he's resting comfortably, safely in God's arms. But you know we miss you. As you can see from the people here, my brother didn't like much of a fuss. He was a low-key guy. But he was a strong man with strong values. If you weren't doing the right thing, he'll shake his head, he'll tell you about it. But he'll be looking at us now and bowling. What are they making all this fuss for? This is not me. You all know how I like it. If you look in your program, you'll see one with him in a red short pants. That was my brother. Simple, easy going, comfortable. Jamal will tell you about the breads and cakes. Early in the morning, she'll get up and meet flour, knead and bread, either baking or the bake on the fire already, just for her to turn off the oven or to wash the pot. That's when he was home by her. When he was home by mom, it's the same thing. Four o'clock in the morning, my brother is up. He's kneading flour, making bread. My mother will get up and meet her whole meal prepared and she gets up at six. So you know how much he's doing in that two hours. He's always busy, he never sits still. Gemma will tell you that, he never sits still. My, well, my oldest brother will tell you that, because they grew up together. He never sits still, he's always on the go. He's always either cooking something, baking something, or he's in the garden. And we all know he had a green thumb, and a very green one at that. Everything he planted, it grew, right? And I wouldn't say he grew for profit, because he'll always be sharing out to somebody, somewhere, somehow. He just plant and give away. That's him. And he always had, he never wanted for anything. And a lot of people are here is because he touched their spirit, he touched their hearts. And we say thank you for that. One of his passions was fishing. And I don't mean fishing like my other brother there. His fishing was, he liked to go on the rock and fishing at night. And although he told mommy, I come in to spend her two weeks with you or two days. When you miss him in the night, he on the rock in her. When he come back, it's early in the morning. So I don't know which one it was. If he was coming to see mommy or just to go fishing on the rock. But it was one of them. His other love was birds. And he had a friend, Dogla. He can't be here today because he's sick. And they would go looking for birds all over the place. Yeah, and a friend, Valmon, the same thing. And they would just go hunting for birds. And he would treat these birds as if they were another child. The amount of love and attention he gave to them. And he would never sell it. If somebody wanted a bird, here, yeah, go ahead, take it. Whereas some people raised him to sell, he never did that. If you were to hear my brother laugh, whether he was giving the joke or hearing a joke, 
you knew it was a big belly laugh. It was uproarious. It was, it was loud. It was rowdy. And I think that's the most thing I would miss about him, that spirit of joy that he brought wherever he went. Gemma, I know it's going to be a little strange, but hold strong. To everyone who came, I say thank you. And keep following his example, being generous, being kind, even to a stranger. Don't be selfish in your giving. Don't be selfish in your loving. Because at the end of the day, we all are ending up in the same place. We all have to answer the same questions. We must go with a clean heart and a free mind. I thank you for your patience. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. Uh, when you read our eulogy, it's all about the life of the person that lies in the box. I know so many things she said, but I like the part she said where he was a generous person. He was kind. And even the part she said where they will take the blame for she to get away. So all so much of years gone, they taking blame for she to get away. So you see, after many years, the truth has come out. Amen? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Let us all stand once more. We want to pray this evening. Hallelujah. Almighty God, Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for who you are, Lord. You is almighty God. Father, you sit high and you look low, God. This evening, oh God, I bring this family before you, oh God. Father, in the time of bereavement, oh God, you bring that joy in the heart, oh God, Lord. In the time of weakness, you be that strength, oh God, Lord. In the time of sorrow, oh God, you turn the sorrow into joy, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, place them in your hands this evening because your hands are safe hands, oh God. I ask you to keep them, guide them, and protect them, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father, we bring, oh God, his wife before you, sister Gemma, by name, oh God, Lord. We ask you to strengthen her, which are weak and which are strong, make her more stronger, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit and Come by wrong, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit take charge over our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, shall lose a loved one, O oh God, shall lose a husband, O oh God. But your word said that you will be there to the widow, O oh God, Lord. You will be there for the fatherless, O oh God. You will be a friend that sticks it closer than a brother, O oh God. And this evening we trust in your word, O oh God. We believe in you, O oh God, because we, we know that you is Almighty God. And there's no other like you, O oh God, Lord. You sit high and you look low, God, and we thank you for the life of your young man, O oh God. We thank you for your life of the, your son, this evening, O oh God. And we ask you to have your God, all those that take time off, oh God, to come and show this support and this love, oh God, we thank you for them, oh God, and we ask you let your Holy Spirit rest upon them. In Jesus' name we pray, as we all say, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, um, we have a scripture reading. Praise the Lord. So, we have a scripture reading to be read. I believe by one of the niece. Um, a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be ununiformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, even so through Jesus, God will bring, God will bring, God will bring with him those who have died for, oh, okay. for, for the Lord himself with a cry of command with the archangels call and with the sound of God's trumpet, we will descend from heaven and the death of and the death in Christ will rise first. Then who then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And also we we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I must say we have a little time to work with. Um, I want to give at least two persons to say something. I know sometimes when you come to a funeral, you might have somebody who are burning your heart to say something about the disease. You know, that the sister said, you know, he was a wonderful young man. I myself worked taxi a little bit in the settlement and he always, he always for me, I had a busy body. He always going and coming, always going and coming. And for sure, you will see him with a feet bag on his side. So you always going and coming. That's how I know him. As the sister say, I never, I, I never really see him lying, man. You come on the stand, take the car, thing, you know, go up the road, come back down. The only problem is sometimes I miss him because he wouldn't wait for me. Any car he get, he go. Amen? So sometimes I miss him. So, you know, I just want to give you a little 10 minutes at least for about two person that will want to say something on behalf of the young man or even to tell Sister Gemma something. Amen? I see a brother pop his finger. Yeah, greetings to everyone that's present here. Greetings to everyone that's present here, right? Yeah. Well, I am a neighbor of the deceased. Um, my name is Bevon. I just want to tell you a few things. I mark it down here, so I won't keep long. So I, I'm going to talk plenty too, just like him. <laughs> I, me and you shall have it. All right, so I have write it down to keep to the 10 minutes, maybe five minutes, and then the next person, right? Now, he was my neighbor. Since I come up in San Grande here, he was my neighbor. One. One thing I got, to, two things I want to tell you about this brother here. He was a very clean person. Very, very, very clean. I can say about that. I remember when he doing, we do gardening. We do gardening. All here in my property, right? Right, do gardening, and when I bring him up on the van, and we go, you know the first thing we just be doing? He going all at the edge of the road. He picking up all the snack paper. I bring him to, to clean my, and plant in my land. He start with picking up all the paper, and he vex it What the people don't show us that rubbish here? He pick up every piece of paper, sweet paper. When he done it now, he come in the land. He cleaning up all along the bed. All the dry bush. So I know that he was a clean person. And not only that, I remember in our next neighbor, in my settlement here where he was there, he come up, because I told him that he passed away, and he said, he come up and to, 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 um, give a little a word to Gemma, but he, he maybe didn't get her. He said, I, I now believe it. Or no? he say, I said, how do you mean now believe that he passed away? He said, just look at the yard. <laughs> that yard never saw. <laughs> That is the man. That is the man lying down there. A very clean fella. Like one. Why again is he? Right. And the, there's a saying. I just want to put in this. There's a saying. I thought about that Bible text, but there's a saying. Cleansiness is next to what? Godliness. So if that's how he is, I hope that he gets closer to God when he was in dying bed in the hospital. That's my wish for him, right? Because I don't know. Right. But the next thing I want to say now, go, he's a loving person, as the sister was saying. Very loving. Although he looks like he'd be hard and tough. But he's a loving pussy cat. A loving pussy. Very, 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 very soft. He might have his, his masculine behavior, but he's very loving. He loves his mother all. Every time he come up in the garden, from the time he jump in, he has to be saying something about his mother. He was real close to his mother. And the time when, his, when his mother did pass away, I thought, Bull was, as I explained to you, he, he, I thought he said he was a masculine soldier. I saw him cry in his mother's funeral. So I say, yes. I shocked when I see him cry. But I didn't take a second. He weep because he was very close to his mother. Like one thing I could say. And he was, he did love Gemma too. I want to say that. He was love Gemma. Because when he going for mango, he say, I'll take this one. I'm making sure I'm getting this one. I, I know she do like to have soft mango, so she go, eat this one. <laughs> you always thinking about Gemma. 
He always loving towards your man. So I tell her he's a pussycat. So he was, he was saying, you know, she's saying, you know, and then he loved what? His brothers and sisters, he always talk about. He was a family man. He will get instilled from his family. Well instilled. He always talking about his mother, about the bacon and all kinds. He liked the bacon too. Right? And then he say, you know, he loved to share, as his sister was saying here. When he go and plant, he not giving away, not, he not selling nothing. He giving, because when he go in the land too, people giving him because, you know why? That's how he is. He like to share, right? And the next thing I want to say, right? I just want to quote, take, put in, look at, go and check it out, right? So I'm saying here, much as the brother loves to share, and he loves people, he loves people, and he likes to share with people, it says here, one, God is love. So he have a godly character in him. Right. Everybody has have a certain things that related to God. And that was one. He loved people. He loved to share. He loved to see people happy. So that is a part of what God, right? And I say, and the next one is the last one I want to say. That is to us because we are living still. He passed. And we don't know at the ending at the time when I went and make going to the hospital, I pray for him. And you know, God knows best. Sometimes person, God has allowed people to lie down that they will be able to look up. So I hope that he look up and he make a, his calling an election show. And that is take from 2 Peter 1 and 10, right? And the next one, God is love, 1 John 4, 8, which he, he, he exercised, right? And to, to us as people who are he has left, he make his calling an election show, we don't know, but I believe so, because there will be many surprises so we don't know. But the point is this, is we are alive here now, so we have to listen to what God says. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, 15, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So in the end, of this, this, this is for us. We are here today, and we celebrate any life. Let us hear the words of God and be not hardened, right? That is all I have to say. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. One more. All right. Come. Good afternoon, everyone. If I didn't come up here and say something about my friend. I want to feel good. Mr. Andrew, better known as Bull. Andre, better known as Bull, was my friend. He used to leave home and come and lie by me. You know, anything you ask him to do, he always used to come and lend a helping hand. And he always used to talk about his love, Gemma. Even though she get him mad sometime, he come. You see that woman there? Hmm, hmm. You understand? And always used to carry something sweet to sweeten she up. You know? And when I heard he died, it really touched me because I had known Mr. Bull since I used to sell in the market. And when he made me taste what love, we get more close as friendship. I uh, a friend as a neighbor he was like a brother to me i could have talk anything with him if i have a little problem you know and he used to make me laugh he used to comfort make you feel forget that now man don't study that everything will be all right and that is how i know andre mr bull i will really miss him because he was a the neighborhood Help her. Money wasn't nothing for him. If he had anything, he freely give. You ask him to do this, he doing it, right? Uh, well, I always want seasoning. So when Miss Jama going to church, I say, I send my little boy, tell Mr. Bull send some seasoning for me. <laughs> <laughs> because Miss Jama don't make joke with she garden, <laughs> you understand? You know, and both of them was very compatible. She liked to plant, he liked to plant, you know? And I don't want to stay long. I just want to say, Ms. Gemma, 
He always love you. He always talk about you in spite of. And God is good. And God, I hope God strengthen your heart. And may you be loved. You know you love it. You're surrounded by love it, everyone. Regardless, you know. And stay in Christ and stay strong and keep on praying. That is the prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I'm going to tell you this one with all the mic. So, when you're missing this evening, if she writes, <laughs> praise the Lord. I, I wouldn't say that one on the mic, okay? <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, family in Christ, uh, it's a good thing to come a in a funeral and, and have a smile on your face. Yeah. Because knowing the person who lying in the box, knowing the kind of person, you know, it has some funeral you go to. You can't get this. You wouldn't get this. But because of his goodness, because of his goodness, and I believe that God was the goodness of, of a man. Because of his goodness, he could stand and, and, and or sit and say, but I remember how he was. I remember he was like this. I remember he used to share. I remember. And you know, the Bible said, the least you do unto one of my servants, you do it unto me. So I want to read a portion of scripture which will be taken from the book of Matthew 25, from verse 31. And he read, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the, as the shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goat on his left. Then shall the king said, unto them on, the, on his right. Come, ye blessed of my, father, of my fathers, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a thirst, I was a hung, hunger, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we need and hunger, and feed thee, or thirsty and give to drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison? And came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of my least, one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then he said, then shall he said unto then he then shall he said also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, he curse unto every into Everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angel. I, for I was hungry, and he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and he did, didn't take me in. Naked, and didn't clothe me not. Sick, in prison, and did not visit. Then they shall also answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as he did it not to the least, one of these, least of these, he did it not to me. And these shall go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. You know, family in Christ this evening. The first reading said, I will not have you to be ignorant virgin concerning ye that are asleep. And I believe Paul was saying that I would not have you to be ignorant. Today let us not be ignorant over the brother that are asleep. Because God had promised us something, that when the trump of God shall sung, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And Paul going to say that we can't prevent them that are asleep. We can't do that. 
Because God going to prepare a place for you and I. And he said that where I am, there he may be also. In the scripture I show you, and, and the eulogy was read. And he said that, listen, he, he loved to share. And Matthew saying here that Jesus telling his disciples, I was hungry. I was naked. I was in prison. I was sick. But knowing Jesus, the disciple asked him, asked him, turn and asked him whenever you are so. I never see you sick. I never see you hungry. But Jesus in his wisdom said, the least you do it unto one of my servants, you do it unto me. And this is what Christian people need to get in the heart and in the mind. That listen, too much of time we're looking to help Jesus. No, Jesus doesn't want to help. He's helping us. Too much of time we want to help Jesus do what he has to do. Jesus don't need no help us, from us. We need help from Jesus Christ. But what about the person that passed in by your home and saying, boy, you know, I want a little piece of that thing. You know what he's saying? <laughs> he only has me. Every man he wants that thing. Every man he wants this. Every man he wants that. I know what the religious is that it, it was not a problem for the brother. It was never a problem. They say that, listen, he, he gave more than he, that, than he sell. It was never a problem. Jesus said, at least you do it unto one of the servants. At least you do it unto the neighbor that now talk. The least that they do it to, or the neighbor that now speak there again. The least you do it unto them, you do it unto me. But no, as Christian people, as believers, we're too high-minded. You know, let me, let me just draw a little, a little thing with you, for you. I remember about a month back, oh, roughly two weeks, I went down Arima to get some goods. And I came back up and in Pinto, well, it had to be around the Christmas. And coming back right as I rise Pinto, my car cut off, bam. Well, my wife in my car, my child and myself. And in the center of the traffic around Christmas time, so you know Pinto traffic is real traffic. And boy, I feel shame because my car cut off. And I set a traffic behind me. And watching two young ladies with, with, with glass in their hand because I know the linemen, they jump out in the road and say, brother, big man, we can't leave this car here now. We had to push this car on the side of the road. You know? And these two ladies put their drink on top of the car and they pushed that car on the side of the road. By the time my wife ready to come out, the car was done on the side of the road. And this, and this, I, I take in this, I said, listen, who you expect to help you is not those that is help you. And who you least expect to help you is those that is help you. They didn't want the big man in the water dress. And if the car remain there, it will have a lot of traffic, push it on the side. And I went back in the car and told my wife, I said, look how things happen. God has put people in place for you. And, and, and today I heard a lot. You heard from the sister, you heard from the, the neighbor. Listen, he never one day looked vexed. He was a joyful person. He was a happy person. And here that Jesus telling his disciples, if, listen, when I'm hungry, if you feed me, listen, do it to the one that passed in. Even last time when I went here, Sister Gemma, I see some side there. No longer trying to plant some scythe. <laughs> my scythe hardly want to come up. So, I know you're not around in my grub in bush. I'll come for you tomorrow, please God. <laughs> Praise God. But, so let's, listen. Family, let me tell you something. This life that we live in, and I keep on telling people this, this life that we live in now, is not a life to make joke. Is that either for God or you're against God? You can't serve two masters at the same time. You can't do that. Anytime you do that, we hear that song some years back, you'll be a Kalalu Christian. You can't do that. Is that you're for God or you're against him? Is that you're both feet in Christ or you're both feet out of Christ? You can't have one foot in Christ and one foot in the world. It would not work. Because a day will come that you had an answer to Almighty God. What have you done when you was alive? What have you done for me? Did you feed the poor? Did you, listen, did you clothe the naked? Did you give the hungry something to eat? What do you tell Jesus Christ? Well, well God, they was, they was trying to play smart thing on me. No, it wouldn't work. The brother that lying here, you know, again, I will remember him. Again, he was a busy body for me, a busy, busy body, always on the go, always on the go. Amen? And you know, I just want us to, Take a page after this young man book. And if we ain't reached that standard yet, let us try to get it right. But most of all, let us know who Jesus Christ is. 
If you know who Jesus Christ is, now is the time to know God. Let me just drift a little bit. Family, let me tell you all something. As a young person, I'm not so much in age, but as a young person watching what's happening in the world today, it won't get better. But you know what? You could get better in Christ. Because God said, if you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. It won't get better. Don't feel some of us wouldn't pass in the war. Don't feel some of us wouldn't get some wounded, wounded in the war. But listen, you need to know who you place your life in and place your life in Jesus Christ. It won't get better than this. But listen, hold on to Jesus. Because I said last night in the wake that listen, one day the trump will call for you. One day your name will call. Ready or not, the Lord is coming. Ready or not, he's coming again. Trim your lamps and keep it burning. You can't get away from that. When the trump of God shall come, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen? So again, family, God bless you, Sister Gemma. I said last night, you know, I told my wife, I'm really, really proud of you. You know, from day one, you're in the New Church of God with us. You know, and, and, and you're women there. Jump high, jump low, you're with us. Amen? So I'm proud of you again for the, for the disease. I know him as one person, a busybody. I, 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 I think nobody ever hear. Some people say he quarrel, but I never hear that. Because again, travel Grandy from Grandy back home. So I know him. Amen? So God bless you all in Jesus' name. Let us all stand at this present time. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to call on Sister Curling to offer a word of prayer for the family this evening. Sister Curling. So I just want the family to come closer, all the family of the deceased. Come closer, you can go on that side. Right? Let it come closer. So this evening we want to give God thanks, we want to give God praise, praise God. we want to give him all the honor and all the glory. This evening, oh God, I ask in thee, oh God, for strength for the family, I ask in thee, oh God, for love and unity, oh God, that they, oh God, can stand together in peace and love. Father, oh God, continue to touch them. Where they are weak, make them strong. Where they are strong, make them stronger, oh God. Help them, oh God, to know who you are, oh God. Father, oh God, this evening, oh God, you continue to embrace them. Continue, oh God, to strengthen them, oh God. Have thy divine way and thy divine mercy upon them, Lord. As they go, oh God, you go with them. Father, in everything they're about to do, go and say, God, you continue to be with them. And they will continue, oh God, to trust you where they can trace you, Lord. Father, oh God, I bring Sister Gemma in your presence, Lord. Father, we know weeping men drop at day and joy coming in the morning. Father, oh God, you strengthen our God. Strength her, give her that courage, Lord, that she will go on and on with strength. She can share that love with someone. She can give someone a card, a word to keep them going. Father, I just want to give you thanks for each and every one this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, she wants me to sing a song for her. Praise the Lord. Lord, I will, I will, I will follow thee up the mountain top, way across the sea. When I hear his voice, 
Almighty God, as we repeat our Father prayer, our Father, the child in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil, for that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this time we have the viewing of the body. Praise the name of God. So we have 50 minutes. All right, so instruction, we start in from the back. So the back will come first to be the body, please. And then we'll come down to the front. So those in the back, you can walk down now. <laughs> 